Good evening, folks. Welcome the administration, the audience, and the rest of the council to a uh, regular session of the New Berlin City Council. If you will, Chris. Uh, Mayor Cook. Council, yes. yep. Councilwoman Grow. Present. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Shami. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. All seven present. With that, we'll have the invocation by Chief Trustee. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the day and the beautiful weather and all thy many blessings. Please be in this meeting tonight. Let thy perfect will be done, and thy will, only thy words be spoken. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> With that, I need uh, a uh, motion on the minutes for the 923-24 work session. So moved. Second. Mm, Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shami? Yes. <clears throat> Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Accepted 7-0. Are there any communications that I need to be made aware of? Um, I'm going to have Mr. Handerhan speak regarding the cameras. We can either do that now or we can do that under the city manager report, whatever whatever council fans. If you'd like, let's do it. Okay. Jason, you want to take the podium? So I know at the last meeting there was a motion made to restrict me from the camera use here in Smith Park and the Shelter House, and that was mutually agreed upon. I did suggest that. However, that motion was, I think, in violation of our charter because it does fall under the day-to-day -day operation. So, um, with speaking with Jake upon that, um, what we have decided to do is I will request that motion be rescinded and a new motion be uh, uh, put out for a vote. Um, with updated information, uh, we actually are able to turn the volume off. So, when we were in messing with the app um, last week, Hallie and I, we had found a button that you can actually turn that volume off. And that way it doesn't record audio. So on the app here, we have the option to turn it on and off to listen to it. Once it's turned off on the app, it has to be turned back on. And the only way it can be turned back on is through the bridge group. It has to be reinstalled if I'm saying it correctly or not. Yeah, to, so I just verified the microphones on these cameras are turned off. They're disabled on the device. To re-enable them, we have to factory reset the camera, which means pulling the camera out of the ceiling, actually factory resetting it, and then re-adopting it to the control panel. So it's not just an on and off in the app once you've turned it off permanently. Okay, so would you like to explain if they're still concerned with the video, the best way to handle that? Yeah, so since executive sessions are not like scheduled at a certain time every, every time that they're held, uh, it's hard for us to go in and like schedule the cameras not to record. Because you want to make sure that you're recording the public council meeting session in here, right? Um, to, so if for some reason you don't want the video to be recorded, honestly the best way to do it is just get some painter's tape to cover the camera. And then that'll prohibit anything from being recorded video-wise in, in, in the room. Any questions? Go ahead, Bill. We have a video camera over there that records our meetings. Why do we need the ones in the corners to record also? Uh, so so, so from, on my recommendation, it's, it's just you get the full coverage of the room. That camera doesn't <coughs> have the field of vision that the security cameras do. Um, and, and then you're also relying on the camera operator to get the action of what's going on that you may want security camera footage for. It's different purposes. That's for the public viewing of the council meeting. That's for security and to make sure that, you know, if something is going to happen in that back corner of the room, we don't have to turn the camera to it to get the video footage that you may need for uh, the sheriff's department or any legal proceedings. Those cameras are what you want for that. And if you, when you have public stuff in here, whether that be a rental, or a council meeting to protect the city, you want to make sure that those cameras are running. 
And I'm happy if I, I'll hang out a couple minutes after the meeting, I'll show you where the microphones are disabled in the, in the panel. It, it shows you in the little eye uh, informational bubble that talks about factory resetting it to turn it back on. I'm happy to show you that. Is that camera recording now? The video camera, yeah. You done? Okay. I did a little questioning about uh, the cameras to the Dayton School Board, mm -hmm. whom I know a person down there does their security and cameras. He informed me that there is probably a scrambler that can be used to stop both video and the audio recording. That scrambler is a handheld device that could be up here, turned on when we go into executive session and turned off at when we get ready to leave. That would not impair the situation as far as security for this building. And I have not got the name of the manufacturer of that camera or any of the software. Is this a possibility? I'm not aware of a device that will scramble the image on hardwired cameras. So these, for wireless, yes, you can get a wireless scrambler that will disrupt the sig wireless signals in the area, also affect cell phone signals, two-hand radios. I'm not aware of a scrambler that will affect a hardwired camera. Doesn't mean they're not out there. I'm just not aware of one. What does council uh, think about this latest situation, or do you want the bridge group to investigate this scambler or scrambler a little bit further? I have a question. Go ahead, Mayor. So there is no device or no other setup you can make where it's a simple on-off switch, unplug this, plug this back in to just take the cameras and the audio out is what you're saying? So the audio has been taken out already. Right. To take the video out. But in order to put the audio back in. <clears throat> we would have to factory reset the camera. It's, yeah, from your office or whatever. No, we'd have to come out and take the come camera out. out. So the that's out. kind of a pain. Well, and, and I mean, city management has decided that they don't need audio in this room at all for, for any event. So we've permanently disabled the microphones on these cameras, not just for council meetings, not just for executive sessions. Just all just for yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then is there another style camera or something like that or another <laughs> hard wear device that could be put in that would make it easier to turn them on and off and to turn off the recording i mean for for these cameras the easiest way to do that someone would log in manually stop the recording the video recording on those cameras okay. that would require them to log back in and turn them back on just on an app on mm -hmm. yeah so when we do that that's at the purview of city management and, and, and council to let me know who to set up with access <laughs> We have to designate somebody. Well, unfortunately, with that case, then I don't know if we can just separate them from all the other cams. So I'm not sure if council should yeah. even have access to the daily access of the cams. I think. I don't know how that works. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Can you just with these cameras? I'd have to look. the The ubiquity cameras they're not enterprise level. The, um, the to go enterprise level, you're going to be spending a lot more money than what the city has spent on these cameras. Um, so the features like, you know, uh, blanking out a screen at certain times just on the back end to disrupt that signal on the system itself, not with like a separate scrambler. Um, granularizing access to specific cameras for specific functions. Those you don't find in just every single, you know, camera manufacturer. We'd have to see if this, if it supports the, that level of granular access. Is it the image, the video image now that's an issue? Because I know when we first started talking about that, I think Ms. Wright suggested the volume being taken off. I said take them out totally. Ms. Well, Wright someone said. I think suggested yeah, just the volume. But there is an interest with protecting the asset, and that's, that's the stand that we're staying on. So I think taking that audio out should suffice council's concern. That protects not only you guys here for executive session, but anyone who's renting the shelter house for their private event. 
we have a we have a responsibility to protect the asset and provide you know video documentation to God forbid anything go wrong. I understand the audio <coughs> side of things. You're almost hearing a conversation and someone's at a birthday party and we can hear what you're saying. 100% get that. So as we open this app and we're like, oh, I don't know if it updated or whatever the case may be. We can now kill the volume. We wanted to bring that to you because we feel as though that would have been suffice for council because that was one of the <coughs> concerns. We won't be able to hear, we can see you, but we can't know what you're saying because there is no audio. Yeah. A rip leader can figure out what all of this is saying. Would that in also include the other shelter to kill yeah, the volume in? They're both. We've already killed both okay. shelters. Uh, then one audio. more question. I mean, audio. I mean? Uh, the, we killed audio on both. Okay. We have the audio on the outside and the vestibule here, but you guys, once we close the doors, then these two cameras do not have audio. Okay. <coughs> what about the cameras on the outside of the 101 building that's recording public conversations? Can we kill them? Mm. There's, there's no reason for anybody to know what somebody walking down the street is talking about. That's, I think, I believe that's an invasion of privacy. I think you, you're on camera just about wherever you go nowadays. Well, I, you know? Yeah, but you're so, not being recorded. Um, I'll, I can think about voice. that. I, I, can, I can definitely think about that. At the end of the day, I, I almost agree with you. Let me think about that. Let me talk to Howie about it a little bit more. We'll take it from there for sure. I mean, the camera's inside. It records voice. I kind of get that. But once it's outside where the public is walking by unknowingly, <coughs> That they're being recorded, uh, you know, I, by I can, voice. I, I can agree to that because that, really, if you think just, about that, like especially the one on one building, we have a camera right outside the door where the cops go in, and sometimes they sit outside and talk. So, I honestly don't have a problem with any audio. Um, I do want to keep some audio in some areas that we need to, like the front desk, so we can hear that customer interacting with our staff. Some like that would be warranted, but I I understand the outside thing, especially the cop. <clears throat> now that I think about it, for sure. I, yeah, I, if we can kill the outside cameras, the inside cameras, like I said, I I understand some of them, mm -hmm. uh, like the one you mentioned one at the front desk, because heaven forbid if some irate, you know what comes in and uh, and it's happened, you know what happened, and, right and yep. they start saying things they shouldn't <coughs> say. At least you have them on video and you have the volume or the uh, the voice, so it's not he said she said it's them saying that. Make everyone comfortable. And and they're shown it in court. The front desk for the you know, uh, on <coughs> but, but I think, you know, just on the face of it, I think we have entirely too many cameras running around the city. Even though every place you go you're on video, uh, I, I, you know, it just, it's, I think it's uncalled for in the city this size. So well, a city I, of this I know side, our crime rate's yeah. like a thousand percent in New Carlisle, so I understand a camera or two, but you know. So a lot of the decision making when it comes to that camera is, you're right, we do have a lot of cameras. We also have public infrastructure and public facilities. We have a public wastewater system. We have a public water treatment facility. And things so, like that. So yeah, that, that we need for that aspect of it. So there's a reason why we have these cameras in place to protect those assets and to protect that utility, to be honest with you. You know, so there's <coughs> reasoning and a logic behind the number of cameras, and believe me, we're not we're not alone in that stance. You know, so the audio, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you that. I think it's a little overkill, so we can definitely administratively take a look at that and get back with council on that. And if I could, they're also set up to protect the citizens, not just the infrastructure <laughs> that's providing stuff mm -hmm. to the citizens in the city, but also <coughs> if there is a birthday party in here and something happens at that birthday party, the city is able to provide that footage to the people who rented it to pursue legal action against someone who, who caused them harm inside the facility. Also at the front desk, when I mean, we talked about someone coming in, what if there was an employee that was nasty with a citizen? There you have video footage to also protect that citizen You know, if they file a complaint. Not that it would happen, but you never know. It's to protect both parties, so. Hmm. Okay, so I do have a question. We've had the cameras now for quite some time. Can I ask why now this is an issue? Uh, I would say that probably it was brought up the other night at uh, before the meeting as to the cameras outside. Mm -hmm. It then came into the fact that yes, we have these. And somebody mentioned about the fact the executive sessions now are being taped. 
They always have been, even at Smith Park. I understand yeah. that, but nobody really gave it much thought until it was mentioned about the outside cameras. I personally would like to see council instruct the bridge group to look further into the as aspect of this scrambler and report back to us in, let's say, a couple of weeks or the first meeting in November, and then let council make an educated decision. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can you explain one more time the need for the scrambler if the volume is turned off? I mean, that also eliminates the aspect of the video in our executive session only. Now, to cut that audio off at all times, I don't think is a necessity. And am I correct that you have to come back in here and reset the audio every time? That's if the city wants to turn it back on. Okay. But all right. So that's an added cost. Mm-hmm. And quite honestly, so is the scrambler because they may not work on these cameras. From That's what why I'm asking no. them to investigate and come back to us. If if it will not work, we still have got the act, the uh, situation of turning the volume off or the audio. Well, they've already stated the volume's been turned off, and uh, if I believe I heard correctly, it would not be turned back on. Uh, so, Correct. There, there's okay. been no intention to have okay. it turned back on. And that takes care of both the shelter houses. So, you know, the statement was made that every place you go, you're on video. So, and that's true. And, you know, the country has gone crazy with cameras, mm -hmm. it seems like. But, uh, so the video, I don't really have a problem too much with the video. It's the, the sound. When it came to our executive sessions, I mean, it's not like we're in here and throwing stuff at one another. I mean, I think we're. Well, well, I haven't thrown nothing yet. You may have, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't noticed anybody throwing anything. Uh, but one question, I'd, if I may, sir, to continue, uh, <clears throat> for for the city manager, you said these cameras has been around for a while. Uh, it must really be hidden good over at the other shelter because I never saw them until we come in here and that. That black on white just kind of sticks out like a yellow thumb, you know. Sure. So how long have we had these cameras throughout the city? Oh, we've been phasing them in now for quite some time. Yeah. Time frame? Uh, at least two years. Yeah, at least. Okay. So they came in gradually, correct? Yeah, we've been phasing them in. As money has been available and we've done right. other projects and it's made sense. How much did all these cameras cost? I have that with me right now. Ballpark. I'm not going to say that. Ms. Harris can find it. Ms. Harris, you can, you can address me um, directly. And Ms. Harris, I don't think is prepared to answer that question right now. If she has that number up, she can bring it. But I think it's so throughout the years, we'd have to do multiple years look to kind of get that dollar amount. Okay. I'd be interested to in know what that figure is on cameras. But since, like I said, since their volume's killed, I don't really have a problem with the camera. Uh, video and our actions of what we do uh, as long as they can't hear us is, is my biggest concern. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I'm, I, I don't know if council, I'm, I agree, I, I'm happy with just the, uh, without the voice on there and what Mr. Bridge was saying to protect the employees over, you know, when they come into the mayor's <coughs> I'm I'm satisfied with just the uh, video. I think I will keep the audio on clearly in uh, mayor's, mayor's court. We're going to need that. Um, but then, like I said, I'm going to sit with Ms. Harris and uh, see what impacts her department, get with Mr. Kiko, see what impacts his department as far as audio, and then we'll do some readjustment on that. Um, but there are going to be some key areas that we do leave audio, especially the mayor's court. Do, do we have a list of the cameras, or is that too many? I don't have a, I've never provided you guys with a list. So. Could you, sir? 
I mean, I'd like to have all the cameras. I understand the water plant, the sewer plant. They're in every building we own. I, I know that if too. If you want to know if they're top right, I think uh -huh. um, that's a little overkill in my opinion. Um, but we'll say that every building we have, 101, 331, mm -hmm. water plant, wastewater plant. Um, I don't think we have any in our list stations. I could be wrong about that. I'll have to ask Mr. Kiko. Um, city garage, et cetera. All of our city-owned facilities is where we, where we have them. Well, you know, a lot of those just has employees in it, not the public, and uh, the public should not have to be concerned about being recorded walking down the street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I agree that the cameras on the 101 building, the volume should be killed, and I also understand the security of having cameras. Uh, if they work properly, they're great. If they don't, you know, what good are they? But yeah. I, 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 I digress. But <laughs> I can say I say most of them are going to lose the audio. To be honest with you, um, I think maybe two or three spots off the top of my head will keep the audio on just for that to be able to catch what goes on. Mm -hmm. But I think we should be able to kill the audio on a lot of them. To be honest with you, and it's oh. fine because sometimes if you read the ones outside, you're looking for information, you just have that constant <laughs> traffic in your ear anyway. So yeah, I think it'll work out better in the long run. Okay. Well, I, I think, I can't speak for all of council, but for myself, I think that'd be a fantastic idea and, yeah. and uh, to, to kill the audio on, on, in my opinion, all the cameras, because it's really nobody's business what somebody else is talking about, even in city buildings, you know, uh, in between employees or coworkers or whatever, you know. Do you have a camera in your office? Uh, right outside the door, absolutely. Well, I understand that. Mm -hmm. It's not in your office. <laughs> no one has a camera in our office. If okay. they told you, that kind of gives me some insight. But um, <laughs> what they we in the 331 building, there are cameras in there that are tied to the security system. Yeah. So if the, someone breaks in and the security uh, system goes off, it those takes, a, it for takes a, a picture. And those have been there yeah. for a while. Those have been there for yeah. a while. But they're not streaming cameras. So they're, okay. like I said, the alarm goes off, it takes one picture, and it goes away. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Kevin. Are these rented cameras, or did we purchase them all? Uh, the city purchased them all. We purchased yeah. them all. Mm -hmm. So we should have some idea how many we own, for sure. And they all take video film. I'm I'm kind of against cameras inside. I, I'm okay with them outside at the doors, you know, and the windows maybe. But, yeah. Yeah, so, do you have an idea? So all the cameras take video. All the cameras Yeah, do. they record video. I mean, all the but ones I mean, that we've installed. But I mean, volume. Volume. Um, I don't think all of them have microphones because they have. There's a wide variety of models mm -hmm. in place because mm -hmm. you know some of these cameras have been in place for uh, well over two years. You know, it's been very much a phase thing. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a huge project where we just installed cameras in all the buildings at once. Um, so microphones are kind of a newer thing on security cameras. Um, <coughs> So I, I can't guarantee that all of them have microphones on them, mm -hmm. but the ones that do, we can definitely turn them off. Don't you guys also do our computer stuff mm -hmm. and things like that? That's what I thought. So mm -hmm. when the contract comes, it's not really <coughs> clear to me what's cameras, what's internet, what's you know providing us a safe place to be on our little laptops. I, I don't know if it, the bill or the contract could be broken down into those things. For so, me, it would benefit me. So we don't bill the city for our work on the cameras. Mm -hmm. We just lump that in as like a peripheral peripheral mm -hmm. that we include work on as a part of our regular invoice for your right. iPads, their computers. Um, the hardware cost for the cameras is separated out on the invoice. And okay. that would be a one-time thing. And then we're paying you to be our cameraman? Because I have seen you here before. Actually, I, I've not been here for years. Um, yeah, I've just seen you here before. Uh, it, well, I, it's been probably about four years since okay. I've been here to film. Um, I actually started filming the council meetings when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So when we started doing the IT, the filming of the council meetings is just something that we've done because I've done it forever to help the city out. I grew up in town. It's not like we don't charge you separately for the filming of those cameras we don't charge you for a site visit to come out and film these meetings like we would to come out and fix a computer um, it's just something that we've done kind of pro bono right. and i pay my staff over time that we don't charge the city to do that okay i was just not clear on that part so i appreciate that yep. my opinion on the cameras far oh. field here 
So what's your pleasure? My opinion, I, I would like to reduce a lot of our cameras and definitely the volumes on them. That's just my opinion. Is that a motion? I'm okay with these two being blanked out for right now while we figure it out. Yes. Is that a motion? Should yeah. I make it a motion? Yeah. I think that's what he's looking for. <laughs> Vice Mayor. I'm fine with there's no audio on the on this shelter house or the other shelter house. And if Mr. Bridge can check into taking the audio off the ones that are outside one on one. And I think the rest of them are fine the way they are. The city has to protect its assets. Any other comment? I'm okay with the volume being shut off and I mean the audio being shut off and the visual. I said all, all backwards. <laughs> being on. I'm okay with the, just the video being on and the audio. I want to be protected too. <coughs> in our meeting. Do you want a motion, Mr. Bridge, or...? Um, I'm going to let Jake answer that. Well, you already had a motion, so that needs to be rescinded or amended or something yeah. to that effect before a new course of action. <coughs> but I thought the last time we did not do motion because we were in a Mr. regular session. Go ahead. I would request that the mm -hmm. clerk. Because so we stopped. Paid attention. So it wasn't a motion. No, I don't we know. didn't. We, didn't we, didn't we, didn't we, we never. We start, We talked about. It, we never actually voted on it because we were in executive session and we. Had oh, to stop. that's right. We did. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, we so there, there was no motion mm -hmm. and vote. Okay. Correct. So, if I understand what council has said, I make a motion that the cameras that has voice recording on them to be turned off as far as the voice and the audio i mean the video can remain uh i don't have a problem being recorded you know. so what exactly is the motion again that the audio is turned off of the cameras Talking about uh, the I like can hear the shelter, which you already said those just turned off. Uh, the uh, the outside of the 101 building, you know, the other cameras that uh, is in city city areas like the water plant and stuff. You may want the volume on there in case somebody comes around at night and you can hear what they're saying. You know, for if they do something. You know, uh, like I stated earlier, the volume inside the buildings uh, to record people's conversations, I think, is unnecessary. Uh, and if I <clears throat> understood you correctly, that you would look into getting the volume turned off, uh, except for certain places like the front window or... I said I'd, yeah, I'd look into it. I, yeah. I would, but I would definitely okay. look into it. So... The uh, so I'll just go with the with what I said. That the, I'll re, I'll rephrase it to request the city manager to get the volume turned off of the cameras that involves the public, with the exception of the front window, because that involves public. But that one needs, I think, to be on. Second. Okay. Did you get it that time? <laughs> so your motion is to request the city manager to turn off the voice recording on any cameras that have interaction with the city. Public. With the public. Except, Except for the front window. The front desk. Front window. I don't know. What, is it, what do you call it? Front desk, front window? I don't know what it's called on the camera system. I think it's like. No, I meant at the, at the city building where the girls are. <clears throat> I call that the, like the front desk, the window. Uh, that one should be left on because they've been, I've eight people come in here before. So one more time. Yeah, please. So, <laughs> so request the city manager to look into turning off the volume on any cameras with interaction with the public except for the front window of the city, of the city building. 
Yeah, and Mayor's, Mayor's Court. I mean, that, that, that has to be on there, too. I think I'd like to add just any of them was volume except for Mayor's Court and public entrances. I don't see why we need to record our employees. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't think that's a great idea. I just don't. What? Would it be easier if I said it the way she said it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we can make it however you want. So I have requested the city manager to look into turning off the volume on all cameras except those that have interaction with the public, except for the city building front desk and mayor's court. Correct. Correct. Second. 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 Hmm. Yes. Okay. So, Councilwoman Wright. No. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. No. Councilwoman Grow. Yes. Councilman Baum. Yes. Councilman Chimmy. Yes. So it passes five to two. So what was the motion again? <laughs> I, just, I just want to make clear so I can reference something. <coughs> So, so the motion is the motion's officially been done and yes. yeah, it's possible. Okay. Yes. Can you repeat that motion so I'm clear? So the request for the city manager to look into turning off the volume on all cameras that have interaction with the public except for the front window at the city building and the mayor's court. Okay. Jay, can I have a legal opinion from you to make sure that was a valid motion or not? Because it seems as though that goes into the day-to-day -day operation. <clears throat> I think the motion was for you to look into it. Okay. Look. So, That's what I got. so I don't think they were What's there to look into, though? We know we can turn the volume off. They were naming specific spots, so I don't want to make this confusing or not. But yeah, I, th I think you're supposed to decide or look into whether you know the positives and negatives of potentially sh shutting those cameras off, the volume of those cameras off, to report back. Kind of my understanding is that what you guys meant so I can understand this correctly so I'm just supposed to look into turning it off or on okay yes. at certain locations well, the motion was yes we okay. can look into it however mr. mayor if I may go ahead uh, question for council is the city manager not employed by us is the city manager not work for us can we not, or are we not allowed to direct the city manager to do the will of this council? And that, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I refer to our attorney for a legal comment on that. Because I think our charter states that we can hire and we fire the manager, and he is our only employee. So I think under that guise, we can direct the city manager to do whatever the will of this council is. City manager is uh, responsible for day-to-day -day administrative decisions. Um, council can direct him to do uh, what it believes is necessary, but he's the one in charge of making daily decisions. So the camera stuff, to me, kind of falls within the daily decision making. Um, as far as council, you know, the meetings, whether their meetings are being uh, recorded things like that. I think that's all entirely a council decision. So I think you both have some influence over these cameras. And uh, as far as the emotion for him to look into it, uh, I, I mean, nothing jumps out of as being improper at this time. Thank you. Good. Are you? I'm done. You're good with that. Well, go ahead and do what you got to do. Can I make can I make a suggestion that we go into executive session? I would like to bring council up to speed on some stuff. We'd have to break rules of council to go to executive session right now, but I'll, I'll have a problem doing that. Do I have a second to that? Second. So a motion to I go into motion. executive session. Right. No one's he said he didn't have a problem. He didn't have a problem. No motion. Or a motion to break rules. Yes. Is this okay? We're breaking rules of council. I, excuse All me, right. sir. 
I made the comment that we would have to break rules of right. council. That, that, was, not that. A, that was not a motion. It was a comment. Okay. You want an executive session, am I correct? Yes, sir. Do I have a motion to go into to break <coughs> rules? I will. I motion that we go into executive session to discuss issues of the city. Break, break rules of council. Break rules of council. council. Second. To go into, to go into executive session. Do I need to say yes? yes please. I motion that we break rules of council to go into an executive session to discuss issues of the city. I would, is that a good enough reason? I would say to go into executive session to discuss the employment of a public employee. Because it could yeah. grow in security too. Security, yeah. That's one of the reasons in security. Yeah. So yes, say okay. that. Okay. <clears throat> Can I just say that? Okay. Yeah. What he said. Okay. Yeah. Security. To discuss public yeah. employee and um, safety for the city. I wasn't. Didn't hear anything. Does she want to say the motion to break rules of council to go into executive session to discuss public employee and security? Yes. So you'll vote on that, okay, and then so you, you will vote second. to go into executive session. Okay, so Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. No. Councilwoman Grow. No. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shami. Yes. So it's accepted five to two to break rules of council all right i guess we need a motion to go into executive session a motion to go into executive session Second. does she have to make a whole statement again no finish that out huh? oh yeah Why yes oh, oh. to discuss personnel issues right public service and safety and issues of the city right do i have a second, second. Um, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. No. Councilwoman Grow. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shaman. Yes. So accepted six to one. Move to go back into regular session. We're okay. back into regular session. Um, okay. <laughs> We already did. Three seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the camera wasn't we, on. We it's okay. We, she recorded it. It'll just. Okay. It'll be minutes. <laughs> I was like, uh, what do you want to do with city manager report? You want uh, Harris to? Uh, since Miss Harris, in my opinion, is the highest-ranking city official we have here in the administration, that she. Uh, Follows up with the city manager's reports. <laughs> I entertain that because we're attorneys next to me now. need to help. <laughs> Fair. I've not done that part. And I don't do one. Oh, my goodness. You got any copies? Yeah, we'll share, won't we? Report. Thank you. Okay, the service report from Howie Kitko, our service director. Um, you have copies. Do you would you want me to read we have those, copies. or is there? Do you want me to bullet point anything in particular? Read it, or just ask for any questions. What's come to pleasure? Whatever. We've got copies. We, 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 we have, have copies. We have yep. copies. What I the the. 
public does not have copies. So right, if Miss oh, Harris, sorry, if Miss Harris, Mrs. Harris, sorry, if if she has a copy and can read what's on there, I sure can. That would be fantastic. Okay, under the Public Works Department, if you see any potholes, please contact the city for repairs. The new street sweeper has been on the road, and we're seeing big improvements already. The city has begun painting curbs throughout the city. Any curbs not completed this fall will be finished early next year. Under the Water Department, working on the OPWC Old High Service Pump Building Upgrade Project, um, they're working on de the design phase. And the water main slash lead service line replacement project, they're also doing the old section of town. Project is out for bid with the bid opening 1024. So I'll be coming up here in a couple of days. Ordinance coming as soon as possible to council to award the project. Affected residents to get information by newsletter and or a flyer will be delivered. Leaf collection is around the corner. Please follow the lead pickup guidelines. If you have any questions on the lead pickups, I think we have brochures in our office also. Sewer department is performing general maintenance. The plant expansion study is complete. The plan is reviewed by the city manager and wastewater superintendent, approaching engineer with some additional information to update the plan further. Under the 2024 road reconstruction resurfacing projects, the 2024 Clark County Road resurfacing contract West Washington and Villa Drive have been paved. They're awaiting the manholes and valve boxes to be adjusted. All ADA ramp replacements are complete. Please peace sidewalk to be installed later October to November. Does that make yes. Yes. Peace, peace drive? Sidewalk. Peace drive? Peace okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. So I've got a lot of help. <laughs> 2024 Clark County striping contract, the striping of the center line on Lake Street. Smith Boulevard and Jefferson Street is complete. The city to paint the turn lines and arrows. The Nature Works grant, the gazebo project at the city pool, city was reimbursed for the project is complete. On the end of next month's uh, finance reports, we'll have an update on the pool because that we have a little bit of expenses that went in <coughs> there and then we've receded the uh, nature grant. The disc golf course preliminary design is complete. Getting estimates from contractors to clear the land for the course. Cost estimates could delay start of the project. Estimated ribbon cutting if project moves forward would be late spring of 2025. Additional items applied for the CDBG critical infrastructure grant to reconstruct Rawson from Scott Street to Kennison was not approved. First denial in six applications mm. for this type of funding. So that was not approved. Application has been submitted for the CDBG allocation funds for Carlisle Park Phase 2 upgrade. Additional ADA sidewalk replacement, installed driveway, parking area, and security, and an additional inclusive park piece. The Monroe Meadows and Reserve at Honey Creek Housing Development Construction Update. They're working on the Heritage Hall parking and drive area, looking into guardrails to keep people out of the grass. And finally, rebuilding of the veteran sign on Main Street. <coughs> if there's any questions, I'd be glad to get those to Howie and get back with council. Go ahead, Kevin. I did have a few things, and I know you'll just need to share them with him. Um, the gazebos, I thought, because they're grant funded, I thought they had to be accessible to the public. This is just an opinion of mine. I don't know where I heard it or got it from, but <coughs> kind of curious about that. And then um, the inclusive park piece that it mentioned in there, I, I spoke with the school and I talked to, um, I think her name was Ms. Wiles, I believe it was Susan, and she said there are three children that are um, wheelchair bound and that with the light weight of the children that parents normally like to take them out of the chair because it's just better for them to move around more. So I don't know what kind of a handicap accessible um, product that is, but it might not be a wheelchair type swing, might not be the best thing to use. And I do have some pictures and things if he wants to get with me, I can show him what would be more appropriate for these under 10 year old children, possibly, maybe not. Maybe this is what he has in mind. I don't know, but I was gonna ask him. I'll get that information I back to him to come here. Yeah. Anyone 
anyone else? Okay. I think the chief's up next. He does that. Oh. And the fire chief. Council and citizens. For the month of September, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 121 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to 14 fire related calls, 10 good intent calls or service calls, and two false alarms. We had 10 calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township and 12 by Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid calls to Pike Township. We answered 10 mutual aid calls to Bethel Clark, four mutual aid calls to Bethel, Miami. At the time of the report, we were at run number 1286. We are now at run number 1344. Uh, since the last meeting on the 16th of last month, we ran 200 calls. We still have our pre smoke alarm uh, program going on. All you need to do is call the station or come by and we'll set up uh, either to give you the smoke detectors or install them for you. Um, I'd like to thank the council for one for being at our open house this past Saturday. Uh, I think it was a great success. We had a lot of a very large turnout from the public. Uh, I think it uh, some of the public was they were really pleased with what they saw with us with the tools and the equipment. <coughs> the auto extrication demo was uh, I think it was a good good thing for them. I know the uh, kids really enjoyed the door breaker <laughs> uh, popping <Yeah>. doors. <laughs> um, so like, all kids like to be door kickers. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was a really good turnout, a really good thing for the for the division and for the citizens. And I think the council enjoyed it to be able to talk to some of the citizens about the department, about our equipment, and also the cost of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. But I do like to thank the uh, council for uh, joining us and uh, making it a, a combined effort. And I hope that we can continue that next year. Uh, we're looking at an extra possibly joining it though in the, in the spring instead of at fire prevention. I think we might be a little better turnout. Uh, any questions? I'd be more than glad to answer. Go ahead. Sorry, this is um, I just have a short question. It's mostly just for the public's knowledge. And, mm -hmm. um, do you, so when you come and install the smoke detectors, mm -hmm. um, like when my parents were where where I grew up, they would just come in and they would tell us as well, like this is the best place. Do you guys do that as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, because there's certain areas in a home that you don't want a smoke detector. Yeah. Um, you don't want it in a corner. Right. Because um, it's a that's a dead air space. Smoke doesn't get into those areas as well. Uh, but yeah, we we give education of where they need to be and why, mm -hmm. and then we'll install them. That's awesome. I think a lot of people that I've talked to they don't know that, mm -hmm. and I'd like to get that information out there because it's really important. Right. And what's nice too is is the smoke alarms that we have we, we um, joint with the American Red Cross on a smoke detector program those smoke detectors have a 10-year battery in them oh, wow. so they don't have to change the batteries out twice a year like with the older styles of detectors and the public needs to also understand that a, a smoke alarm is only good battery operated smoke alarms are only good for about five to eight years even if the battery is still good or whatever the smoke alarm itself is only good for about eight years also, it was it was a joy to uh, come to the open house. I loved meeting everybody and seeing everything. Awesome. Thank you for your extra help too, okay, putting out welcome. chairs and tables. <laughs> Chief, what's our response time on the squad here in town? In town, if the medic is in town, our response time to anywhere in the city is anywhere from three to four minutes. And let's say, for example, if we have to pull a unit out of Bethel. Uh, what are we talking about? An additional 25 minutes? No, you're looking at it depending on where Bethel's at and depending on if it's coming from Bethel Main Station on Lake Road. Uh, you're looking at a 10 to 15 minute response time. Uh, if you're if they're coming from um, their others their other substation, uh, I can never remember that area. <laughs> um, we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, over on um, um, on 40. Kobe's. Huh? Donaldson. Yeah, Donaldson. Yeah. Um, uh, if it's coming from Donaldsville, it'll be a little longer. Uh, if they're not available, uh, we call from Pike Township. Pine Ta Pike Township, you're looking at a 10 to 15 minute, depending on where the call is in our area. If we have to call from Bethel, Miami, 
you're looking because uh, I it, we have a roster or what we do is reach out to our closest is, is Pike Township or Belva Clark depending on where it's at in the city uh, we've kind of set up to where if it's on one side of Lake Road uh, Lake Avenue excuse me we'll call Pike Township on the other side we'll call Belva Clark um, if say Belva Clark's not available and Pike Township's not available our next one to reach out to is Bethel Miami uh, with Bethel Miami you're looking at a good 15 to 20 minute because that's you're not only crossing county lines you're talking about crossing two county dispatch systems we I have to tell our dispatch center to uh, to contact Bethel Miami for the medic they have to get on the phone they have to call Bethel Miami Bethel Miami has to take the call from them and then Bethel Miami will punch them out so you're looking at probably a 20 to 25 minute uh, delay I guess where I'm coming from with we've got 10 calls that were answered by Bethel, uh, Bethel Miami Pike. Bethel Clark Miami, yeah. And if we had a heart attack, that 20, 25 minutes could be a life breaker. Yes, sir. Our problem right now is we're getting inundated with having, um, we take a medic run that medic run takes our crew approximately an hour to an hour and a half till they're back in service. Time you go to the house, get the patient, go to the hospital, say if we're going to Kettering or we're going, or we're going to uh, Miami Valley or Grandview or something like that, uh, or even to Springfield. You take the patient there, then you have to turn the patient over to the hospital. And sometimes that's a wait in the ER. Um, we get the patient in the room, then we get our, our medic uh, back stocked up, cleared, and then to drive back to the city. Uh, it takes a while and right now we're getting inundated where we're getting bumped um, what we call bump outs we're getting bumped out two and three calls within an hour sometimes it's even shorter than that so that first calls we're handling that first call and then those second or third call we're mutually mutually aid out to Bethel Clark Pike Township or Miami I've even reached out as far as to uh, Heber Heights for a mutual aid medic um, you know I've Last month, one day we had our medic, Delta Clark's medic, and Pike's medic, all three at Van Crest at the same time for three different calls. Wow. And probably with, let's say, four to six calls a day, we're probably putting a lot of miles on that new medic. Am I that correct? new medic will go over 100,000 miles to this year. <laughs> and it's not so much the mileage of going to the call is the mileage going to the hospitals. Uh, a round trip for our medic to go to Miami Valley and back is over 45 miles. And you do that two or three, four times a day. Um, and then, because we also, you have to understand where, where we're transporting. We transport to Springfield. Uh, Hube, our closest is a Huber standalone ER. Then you have Springfield, we go to Enon standalone. And then uh, in the city of Dayton, we go to Grandview, and we go to Miami Valley, we go to Soin, and then on the north end, we also transport to Upper Valley and uh, Ketter and Troy. So that's long hauls, a lot of miles. <laughs> and I know I should probably be asking this of Mr. Bridge, but what's your anticipation of a second line medic on? As far as needing one, we need it now. Yeah. Or call I'm by. Gonna, I'm going to ask a loaded question. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do we have any idea of when that's going to take place? No, because my budget won't allow it right now. And I know we're a year away if we order a medic today. If we order a medic today, depending on where we get it from, and depending on how we do it, we're at least a year to three years out for build time. And then also too with that where with our engine we did the same thing of locking in that price we can lock in the price for the medic but if that medic say is a pushback where it's not going to be built until the next year and that chassis is a newer year chassis that price is not going to be a good price because we're going to have to pay the extra money for that newer chassis so it's 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 a hard game right now you know looking at everything and trying to budget to um, we were lucky when we budgeted and we we did the right move when we when we bought our engine 
and locked in that price. The same engine that we're going to pay less than um, $640,000 for right now would be over $700,000 to purchase. I, I guess I'm concerned. Is council hearing what I'm hearing? I, 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 Go ahead, Kathy. That's what I was going to ask, too. I do think it might be effective to put that order in on that medic now. I mean, I know it's a lot mm -hmm. of money, and I know we really don't want to spend it, but that's beside the point. I really think she needs a medic. Jesus Christ. <laughs> i got to have it on silent. Sorry about that. <laughs> we, Ms. Wright, we've been looking at it and, and speaking with um, city manager, assistant city manager, of looking at signing for one at the at the first of the year right um uh, we've been looking at three different companies mm -hmm. that way we to get a, the best price that we can mm -hmm. at but still get the right medic that we need um the last medic we bought was a brawn and we paid for the medic alone that doesn't include the cotton the load system um that's where you have to look at a lot of the prices come in um a cot right now is twenty four thousand dollars that's the bed just right. for the cot the load system is another forty five thousand what's a load system load system is where we can take the cot up to the back of the medic it hooks in we hit a button on the cot and it oh, raises yes. the cot and puts it in okay. what that is it's it's a uh, safety feature for the crew and the patient mm -hmm. uh, when you have a large patient and you're trying to lift that cot and I did this mr. Lindsay can, can mm -hmm. t t test and mr. cook uh, I remember we had to lower the cot on the ground and pick the cot up and put it in the back of the medic. Um, and you had a lot of back injuries, right. and that saves yes, those yeah. back injuries. Uh, the same medic that we paid 270, no, excuse me, 178,000 for right now would be 233,000 just for the box, just for the medic. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing is with buying a new medic to replace our, our second out medic now, the Dodge, the cot and the load system that's in it now we bought that out of the COVID relief fund money and we will be able to take that medic that that cot and that load system out of the dodge and have it reinstalled in the new medic so that'll, that will be a savings for us there so we can replace the other one with the use because i'm not talking about retiring the old one i'd like to keep two in service but if we if we replace the dodge with the new medic we'll still have two medics in service okay. we'll have the new brawn that we bought two years ago uh, without three a years ago and, then, <laughs> and, we don't have and what we try to do is we try to rotate those medics frontline medic what we call frontline medic who the first medic right. out the door yes. we try to rotate those on a every two week basis to try to keep the mileage down and that type of thing everything for anything we have is it's just super expensive to get worked on right or to fixed uh, the dodge medic this past week went in for um new ball joints and two two new front tires and that was twenty four hundred dollars does our city garage work no. on the medic why not uh they're not they don't have the equipment to be able to raise the medic and plus also to our fire apparatus you have to be a certified fire apparatus mechanic to work on them but that's not the medic that's just no, the fire that's fire. so if we had a better lift we could work on our own vehicles yeah but you're talking about put it this way chrysler dealership here in town they can't work on our medic because they don't have the lift well we were looking at buying a new lift it was on our cip and i was wondering if when we buy it maybe we should go up the other few thousand and buy one that'll pick up a aim if they also too have them if the mechanic is, is able to work on that medic if he's understandable for it okay more i need to know thank you um, like I said, it's it's one of those things right now, everything we do, there's nothing cheap. Right. There's nothing, if, if the people that came to open house saw that nothing we have is cheap. And then also too, I'm trying to not only look at our equipment and look at our, at our at everything for that, but I'm also trying to look at salaries to raise our salaries for our, our, uh, our personnel. Right. Um, you know, as the, our, the, the survey that I gave you, uh in the county we're the lowest paid department in the county right now mm -hmm. so. anyone else is this a time to if i have something i want to add i'm going to break rules go ahead <laughs> <laughs> okay well i'm here tonight because my grandson broke his ankle a week ago friday Excuse me, ma'am. Name and address oh i'm okay <laughs> <laughs> deborah walters and i live at 902 applewood so 
I kept saying, do you want me to call an ambulance? Because the pain was so bad, he was trying to pass out, trying not to pass out. But we got him in the truck, drove him down to the fire station because it was quicker. And I went up to the door thinking I was going to find somebody there to help. They can't even man the station at, at all times. Like, there should have been somebody there. But they don't have the budget for that. And that concerns me. What if it was a bleed and he was bleeding out? and there was nobody there, and the fire department, while I was standing there trying to figure out why nobody's coming to the door, is coming down the road because they had to go out of town and help somebody else because that's what we do. If we care about our people, we go help when they ask for our help. So, I know that- One of the things that I'm trying to bring out is the fact that we need the second medic so that we can effectively give the citizens of this city the care that mm -hmm. they need. Yes, because if you don't take care of your citizens, they're going to be real unhappy. And if we had, during the drought, if somebody's gas water heater, their furnace, whatever they're using for gas blew up, you know what a catastrophe that would have been? And I don't know, but there's a lawyer here. Would the city have been liable for that if they were not able to respond and handle that like they should have been, even because they had to call people in? I mean, if those people got together, would they have been able to sue the city because the city was not able to give them enough budget to give them enough trucks and fire trucks and people to man those to handle that kind of catastrophe till the extra help got there? Is that a possibility? I'm answer your question. I do not believe the city would have been liable. Okay. The problem, I guess, comes back to the fact of having enough money to go around. This city has been very gracious with both the police and fire in granting us money. But as the cost of operations has gradually increased, sometimes even more than gradually, I think we're getting to the point that there might be in the works another operational levy for the fire department or possibly a bond issue, something of like that. I think in the new budget that's coming up, I personally, if I'm still here, will ask for about $10,000 to hire a person on a per diem basis as far as grants. And that's something that in, when we get in the budget process, we'll address at that point. I understand your concern, but I think that until we get all of this together, it's not gonna marry up real well. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, I'm, I'm assuming the budget's already been set for this oh. year, no? So, I was sitting here thinking, and, there, and I talked to a lady at the firehouse the other day, because I went to the open house, and um, I thought she had a pretty good idea. I don't know how it would be implemented. But I would look at, number one, maybe for one year, you give X amount of dollars more than you normally would to the fire department, get it up to snuff so we have one of the better ones, and that hopefully would last five, ten years before you would have to really bump it up maybe and then just go back to the usual budget per year. And another one we, she mentioned that she mentioned was whether or not we could have like a clinic where there was somebody there 24-7 each shift that if somebody comes to the fire station and needs immediate help, that they can stabilize that person until the fire department or the medical department, the medics get back. I think these ideas would possibly, uh, I guess, would be something the chief could entertain, could look at, and then get back to council or administration and kind of let us know where we want to go with this. Yeah. Because if you do it once, and then you can look it out and say, okay, we need to do this much this year, and then that'll give us a break, it'll give our budget a break, and then we can go back to where, you know, 
We just got to service, have, only, have money to service. The only problem with that, <clears throat> when you start taking money out of one fund to give to the other fund, somebody's going to be short. Yes, and I realize that. And the cost of operations, it's, I won't say, pardon my French, damned if you do and damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. But I think the administration has a very tough time in trying to make right. ends meet. I realize that. But I, I appreciate that. your input, young lady. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Ma'am, I, I, I have a the question I have is why didn't you call 911? And, because, and the reason I say that is even if our medics are out of town, we can get a medic from another area fairly quick. We can also, you speaking of a bleed, if you when you call and tell them if there a would bleed, have been, yeah. the police officers, deputies, they all have first aid training, they all have kits in their car. They could have came and stopped the bleed mm -hmm. and, and stabilized till a medic got there. So okay. I, I've never understood, and I'm a retired firefighter, by right. the way, just so you have a little background on me. The to, to go to a station when it, you never know if somebody's there because the, the medic is out is not uh, kind of really a good idea. Well. <laughs> because it is not manned all the time. It, it's, it's part paid. We have some full-time people on it, but there's not always somebody there. If there is, they're usually in a, in a medic somewhere. Well, this is the second time I've ever gone to get help. I forget what the first time was. Oh, I know. Same kid. <laughs> anyway, I forget what he did, besides the fact he was drunk. <laughs> but um, so it was, we could get him there faster than waiting on the squad. That night there was somebody there, and this has been two or three years ago. I just seems like there should always be somebody there because if you gotta wait on a medic, you're saving a little time if it's not, if, as long as it's okay to move them. I mean, right. it might not have been, if it was a different kind of injury, he wouldn't have been moved. I would have been calling 911 and trying to figure out what I can do until they get there. But this wasn't like that this time. So, but, and it was just down the street. Right, but, but my suggestion would be that to anybody can hear me and listen, Call 911 because, like I said, police officers, they can stabilize, uh, especially on a bleed. And any break should be stabilized for it's ever moved. But even if you think it's a broke or, or a break, uh, it should be stabilized before the uh, person is moved. And not having it stabilized can cause more and permanent damage than the original break. So it's just, you know, I, I just, I didn't know I don't know your background. I just wanted to give those few little words of encouragement and wisdom, I guess. I'm not the smartest guy alive, but I do know medics. Uh. Well, the way he was yelling, it would have been kind of hard not to do something. And I asked him, do you want me to call the squad? Because I was willing well, to call the squad. Well, first of all, you never ask. You just do it. And <laughs> he didn't want to. Well, he's 19, and he's, he's healthy and muscular. He's got a good job, but now he's going to be off for 14 to 16 weeks. Mm. But he was able to get into the truck, and so I hauled him down there and thought that was the best course. If he would have been bleeding, like you said, mm -hmm. I would have been calling 911 for sure. I mean, my wife never yeah. wanted to go to the hospital, and I said, you're going. So you might as well just clamp it up. Yeah. And I'd call the chief and say, hey, I need the boys down here. But I called 911 mm -hmm. if I called the chief. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But that, that's all I wanted to say. Thank yes. you very much for your input. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief, for your report. Uh, the planning and zoning and mayor's court case reports, I believe, are attached. And then we are at the police report. And, uh, Clark County Sheriff's <laughs> Office report is for the month of September. There were 333 calls taken, 59 reports, 122 assists. Criminal arrests were 25, felony arrests were 9, misdemeanor arrests were 8, warrants were 8, traffic stops 127, 
We had 98 on the traffic warnings. We had 31 moving citations, 960 business checks. We had six code enforcement follow-ups, two traffic crashes, and two parking citations. And that is the police report. Any questions? Okay, we're going to move on to yep, move the on. one that I'm a little more comfortable with, and that's the finance <laughs> report. So here we go. This is a little bit better for me. <laughs> Finance report for the month of September. We took in $666,676.46 for a total year to date of $8,065,244.66. On the expenditure side for the month of September, we spent $559,321.75. For a total of six million five hundred forty-five thousand eight hundred ninety-five dollars and fifty-eight cents, our beginning balance at the beginning of the year was eight million one hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred ninety-one dollars and twenty-two cents, and at the end of September we still are holding a balance of eight million five hundred sixty thousand five hundred ninety-one dollars and four cents. For the month of September, all the bank accounts are reconciled. For the income tax collection, we took a CCA, with help with CCA, we took in $125,356.61 for our income tax. And that is um, carrying for year to date 4% on the tax collection. <coughs> Interest income report for the month of September, we receded $27,000. $945.41 for a total of interest collected year to date of $250,438.58. Still looking at a little over $300,000 by the end of the year. For the mayor's court report for September, there are fines, court costs. They collected $3,637.50. For a total of $38,131.30. And I believe that is all on my finance reports, and I'll entertain any questions. Any questions for the finance director? I have a couple. Go ahead, Gaddy. Um, Daniel and Jones was 1705 I believe that was the man who spoke last week. or Yeah, it was last week. I didn't hear the very beginning. Catherine. Daniel and Jones, the lawyer. Wasn't that the man who, so did we pay him to speak to us last week? Is that what that money was the services. For? I believe it's a um, retainer. That's a retainer for him? Because and I, I thought Jake was our lawyer. I don't, didn't understand the difference. No, Greg Daniels he, is assisting with uh, tax increment financing and those types of things with the developments. Mm hmm So. And you don't do that, I guess? Is that? Uh. I mean, I understand it, right. but it's like a 30-year uh, structure uh, structure of okay. uh, tax revenue. So just to learn that on the fly would be pretty rough. So you kind of have to have someone knowing what they're doing. Right. To show you how so to he'll be doing that with us, with Monroe, and then with the other one, too. And Correct. Greeks. Okay. Got it. The other question was the zeroed-out balances. How long do they have to remain on here? I was just curious. That's just a silly question, but just kind of wondering. And which report? I'm sorry, Kathy. Um, like wastewater, wastewater consumer charges, zero, zero, zero across the board, not applicable. And like, uh, I, there's just a lot of them, you know, that just they don't pertain to us anymore, like COVID money and things like that. And I just wondered when those were going to fall off. And you're That's looking all. at the statement of cash. Report. I am looking at, um, I don't know what I'm looking at, to be really honest with you. Go back to the revenue report. <laughs> we can do that probably the first of the year. They're okay. still active until we close them out officially with the state. If it's something that we know we're not going to either be receding or putting money into. Right. That's why I was wondering because it's just there's zero clear across the board and it's like, wow, COVID was a while back now. But, you know, it's not a biggie. Not a biggie at all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, I need a motion to accept the finance report. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. 
Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chamey? Yes. Accepted seven to zero. Okay, I need a file motion to accept the uh, mayor's court report. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chamey? Yes. Accepted seven to zero. Thank you. And going to the rest of the informational items. I can't read his note. Um, would you like me to go over what he has for the audience? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Under discussion topics, we have the collective bargaining unit negotiations, comprehensive land use plan, first discussion with city council, icebreaker questions that are attached in your packet. Council was asked to ponder certain questions for next session. Under 2025 capital improvement and operating budget timeline, they emailed to the city council in July. Work sessions with the council at the fire station start at 6 p.m. and that will be next Monday, Tuesday, and if needed also Wednesday. We have three dates, 6, 6 p.m. Intro and first read of the budget is um, hopefully going to be on November 18th with an action on December 2nd. The reserves at Honey Creek and Monroe Meadows, general updates, Monroe Meadow, Meadows, excuse me, alternative to better connect Addison, New Carlisle, and Main Street. That has a handout and discussion. Mm -hmm. New Community Authority, Ohio Revised Code Chapter 349 summary is attached. Travel expense memos are attached. New council member packet and art in the city. Under that, it's wishing to work with Councilwoman Grow and other members to accomplish. And what are the next steps? Question mark. Policy or other items Council is working on as Citizen of the Year. Bond and ballot information for City Council. Goal to have information compiled and sent to Clark County, CC? City Thank Council. You. <laughs> By the end of the week. <laughs> Upcoming legislation. The reserves on Honey Creek. TIF legislation. Um, I was told maybe to table that. Do I say that now? Uh, yeah. They might want to do that. Okay. Miami Valley Lighting, Health Insurance Renewals, 2025 Capital Improvement Plan and Operating Budget, the Business Continuation Plan, 2025 Sheriff's Contract and 2025 Dispatching Agreement, Collective Bargaining Unit Contract, Residential Developments, Subdivisors, agreement with warranty and performance bonds and under additional discussion topics rotary application rotary so we can talk about that any questions no if not we'll go to comments from the public <clears throat> if you will come up to the podium name and address and uh, you've got five minutes Nobody wants to speak. I already had myself. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to the legislative end of it. Uh, resolution 2024 14R, that's going by the wayside, am I correct? Do I still need to read it? Um, yeah, go ahead and read it since it's on the agenda. And then... All right. So, resolution 2024 14R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution approving a memorandum of understanding with Randy Bridge. And that's going to die for a lack of a motion. Huh? Go ahead, Chris. So ordinances, we have zero introduction and six actions. So the first one, A, Ordinance 2024-50, introduced on 10-7, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance amending Chapter 278 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle by removing it from its entirety and dissolving the Parks and Recreation <coughs> Board. So move. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any uh, comment? Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chamey? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Accepted seven to zero. Um, Ordinance 2024-51, introduced on 10 public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance amending Chapter 276 of the Codified Ordinances of New Carlisle 
for the purpose of establishing parks and recreation and public service commissions. So moved. Second. What the preceding ordinance did, it did away with the Parks and Recreation Board, and this ordinance is establishing it, establishing it again under the committees that we are going to be setting up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor Abelson? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman uh, Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? I actually have a question. I thought you were going to ask for questions. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to see if somebody could explain under the 276.04 where it says each member would receive $50 a month. To the what, best, the, what the thought was. Well, that was something that was addressed uh, <clears throat> some time back about the fact that we had not gotten a whole lot of volunteers for some of the boards and the committees. And I thought that that had been dropped out of the latest edition. Um, I know Mr. Fields had a question in regard to that on the plan board. Because in this, I went through the, the thing that you've got in your packet, and I can't find it in here. If that's the revised edition of it, the one I have in the packet still has it under Parks and Recreation Commission and Public Service Commission. Both. Okay, but those are the commissions, not the boards. You're only going to pay the commissions, not the board members, not the planning board or right. phoning, the uh, BZA. Those board members don't get paid. That's strictly my understanding and my conversation with Randy Bridge is just for the commissions, not for the boards. The boards are in there by charter. They're voluntary. They have to be that way. You cannot pay the BZA or the planning board people. That's only for the commissions. That's my understanding, Mr. Bond. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I guess I, I don't, let me think how, how I should say that. One, I just don't think that those should be a paid positions. I understand the, um, the issue we have with getting people to volunteer for some of these. And when I look at us as a, as a community here, I think there might be a better way and I just came up with this idea recently, but um, to address some of these things as far as instead of doing a formal, you know, Parks and Recreation Commission, Public Service Commission, I know if I was not on council, but I still was here in the city, I would be more inclined to help with certain projects if I knew, hey, if city council called me and said, hey, would you help with X, Y, and Z, kind of like the charter review. It was, here's a short period of time, we need you to help us with this particular project. And then if we decide to make that a paid position for that particular point in time, okay. But I think some of these things, and, and not, um, not, I guess, it's a creep. And, and it, eventually, all at once, our budget continues to grow when we put all these things in here. And if we're not careful, we get down the road and, okay, we've got to annex more land because we need more dollars because we have all these little things built in. And one of the things with the parks and rec that I see is I don't know that they need to meet year round every month, but if they're being paid $50 a month, I would expect them to meet and do something for the $50. But maybe it's on an as needed basis where council directs it and says, hey, we would like, we would like you to plan a new festival for, to have in the park next year. And council puts budget dollars to it and they say, we need your help, Tom, Dick, and Harry for 
these three months, please plan this, bring us the information. And for those three months, when you're planning, when you're taking this task for us, we're gonna compensate you $50 a month. And then after that, you're done, you're, you're, you're off. And I think more people would be um, inclined to sign up to help with different projects if they knew it was a start date and an end date and, and they accomplish the purpose and then they go back to their busy lives. <clears throat> so I haven't thought through all the details of that idea, but I just, I'm a little hesitant to just put $50 for, I think it's, uh, is it seven members or something? Five. Five, Five members to each group um, and, and make that a, official, I guess. I'm, I'm just a little hesitant on that. That yeah. was that was going to be my same comment too. I I I think people, if you they're excited about doing something, they're going to do it for, as a volunteer. I know I would. I know lots of people would. I think that paying fifty dollars is a nice gesture, but one, as he says, will probably roll. And why pay these guys to ha be in a fun committee when he's getting paid nothing to be in a a difficult committee so then you start comparing and stuff and I just really want to just drop that whole line C out of there and just forget the compensation let's five find five members and I think we can for all of our committees I can mention something that I run into the younger generation people younger than even some of the people in here are not inclined to volunteer their services. They want paid. I butt heads all the time over this trying to get them. Sometimes you need to do something just because, because when you're broke and you can't pay somebody but you did them a favor, they'll come help you. So I think incentive is a good idea, but I wouldn't throw money out there. Maybe if you could find something else. Hey, we're gonna buy your lunch while you're planning at each of these meetings. Something along those lines. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. <clears throat> we could probably do something like that, as Mr. Bond said and, and Mrs. Wright said, to uh, on a case by case or a, a uh, event by event and, and not pay them, but I think the motion or the uh, ordinance would have to be amended and then sent back to the attorney to be rewritten and then brought back to us. Or it could just, uh, since we got the voting before uh, comments was done, we could Chris, just let, where are let we it on die this? for uh, Okay, but well we've got the votes already taken. We've got Eggleston, Cook, and Grow. Jake, your thoughts? Uh, so you have three votes in favor so far. Mm -hmm. Motion second. Mm -hmm. Uh. Now, if you vote it down, we got to wait another 30 days, am I correct? Not if it, we change it. Okay. I mean, that's probably what I would do is just vote it down and then reintroduce it with changes. So, Mr. Bond, is your Bond? vote? Uh, no. Councilman Chammy? No. Councilwoman Wright? No. Councilman Lindsay? No. So, it does not pass. Three to four. Does somebody want to make a motion to uh, send this back to uh, administration and have them either pull that section on the pay? Uh, I think the law director knows what council is wanting. I think uh, he could either do it or we could make a motion and ask him to do it, do a motion. Whatever I think I understand what you want. Pardon me? I think I understand what you want. Okay. So okay. I, I think the director will take care of it. All right. Okay. Um, so 2024 52, introduced on 916 24, public hearing and action tonight.
creating the Monroe Meadows Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of the parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of those pay service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center, and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or, or service parcels in the incentive district. So on this Jake, one, I'm going to let you explain this. But on this one, this is when this we're going to do a motion table. to table. Uh, this one needs to be tabled. Uh, yeah. Something needs to be filed, an economic development plan that hasn't been filed yet, and we can't pass this ordinance until that gets filed. All right, so this needs to be, uh, I don't want to say it died for a lack of a motion. Uh, you would just move to uh, table. 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 Move to table. table. Second. So, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shannon? Yes. Uh, ordinance 2024-53 introduced on 10 public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance adopting the Boards and Commission Handbook for the City of New Carlisle. Um, I think we all have been through the board and the handbook. Is there any comments in regard to it? Go ahead, Mr. Bond. Uh, so one thing I'm just wondering is if we're going to go with the wording commissions, shouldn't the handbook say commissions instead of committee? And all through that handbook, the word commission doesn't show up. But committee shows up a gazillion times, but commission doesn't so I just thought for you know consistency maybe it should state commission I yeah. will yield to the uh, legal authority uh, yeah a lot of times those words are used interchangeably uh, I understand it though um, to make it consistent with the, the ordinances and the charter it makes sense to change that to commissions the other the other thing was just that, um, and we kind of dodged a bullet, I guess, on this, but in there it says that the committees are not to be paid, but the other ordinance, the other would, have, ordinance. would have had that in there. So okay. just to be consistent that way. Um, and then, let's see, page 27 uh, of that. So, and, and I'm guessing we might need Jake's opinion on this, but at the end of all of the ethics verbiage, it says a violation, this is right under 18, it says a violation of this code of ethics shall not be considered a basis for challenging the validity of a city council board or committee decision. And I'm just wondering why a, an issue with code of ethics wouldn't be a reason to challenge a, the validity of a decision. Uh, this handbook was uh, put together by administration. I'm not really sure of the thought process behind that language um, I, does that seem weird though yeah kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a lawyer I don't know but I just it seems like if there's something ethically in question that that would be a reason to do you want to take a list until Jake can bring us back on that, might, that might be a good idea probably yeah before we do that, ahead, I'd yeah. like to comment. The idea, I thought, now this is my reasoning, I thought we switched from a, um, before what we just got away with was the board to a committee to make it more relaxed 
and and simpler for people to join instead of being a very strict hard rules that we had to follow to be on the board is getting all the minutes in and it being very specific on what everything was and now it's just it's totally copied over the um, board's language and added it with the committees and it it's like the two are, are mixed together and, and we still have boards and we're making committees there should be a, a, a differing line between the two so I would ask that you could look into that possibly and maybe divide them together. They are not one and the same, or there was no reason to do away with our board. We might as well have kept the board. Do you understand? Am I speaking well? I'm yeah, not sure. I understand what you're okay. saying. So just make it more relaxed with respect to committees. That that was I thought the general idea, and it does not look relaxed to me. That's only for committees, though. That's what you're saying. Boards are still tough. Yeah, boards, boards are. Boards are tough because tough. there's certain rules you've got. Exactly. Exactly. And according to charter, we've got to do certain exactly. things. Exactly. Just like you do. Right. Exactly. So there's certain things I have to follow that you have to get on a timely manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Go Move ahead. the table. You want the table? Second. Yeah. Is that all right with us, yeah. the council? So we're going to motion to take we need a second to vote. Yeah. So, Shami oh, yes. seconded. Mm -hmm. So, Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shami? Yes. Accepted 7 to 0 to table. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, ordinance 2024. 20, Dash 54, introduced on 10724 public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance adopting the disaster recovery and response plan for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So Second. Any other comment? Go ahead, Mr. Bond. Um, so on this, Just in keeping, let's see, where does it say here? Under because the fire chief reports to the assistant city manager, I thought that it would make more sense. Uh, under section three, under the ordinance verbiage, under section three, where it says the city manager and the fire sheet chief shall regularly review the plan, it would seem to me, as far as a uh, whatever you want to call it, the hierarchy of authority, that at least the assistant city manager would be added to that if he's the mm -hmm. fire chief reports directly to him versus um, the city manager and the fire chief. You, so council thinks that we should just add the assistant manager in there or make it the assistant manager and the fire chief. I just thought that we might need to look at that as far as um, being consistent. And then the only other thing was under each, because during a disaster, the fire chief is the, he's the guy calling the shots. And under each of the um, people listed, city manager, finance director, uh, director of public service, and this is just me, I just like things to be the same. But, um, at each, it's, it's listed differently for each of the their support to the fire chief. And I just thought they're all supposed to be basically giving him what he needs. And so if they should all say, you know, support the fire chief is required or we have one that says support the fire chief is required we have one that says support the fire chief is necessary and we have one that says support the fire chief in coordinating response efforts and i just thought for consistency it should just say the same thing any comment so i think you want to make an amendment to the uh... i'd be glad to do that 
Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to amend the ordinance 2024-54 under section three to under the review and update to add the city manager and assistant city manager with the fire chief in their verbiage. And then under point number three of the disaster recovery response plan, make each of the responsibilities under the police administrator, well, I guess the police administrator wouldn't fall, but city manager, finance director, and director of public services that they would all um, read, support the fire chief as required. Second. Any comment? I need a second. I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you, um, yeah, do you want her to repeat and make sure she got it? Sure. All down. So, the motion to amend 2024 54, section 3 to add city manager and assistant manager, along with fire chief. Point three of the disaster recovery plan make each responsible under city manager, financial, financial, and public to read to support the fire chief as required. Go ahead. Okay. Any comments? So this is the most amended. Yes. 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 Okay. Chris, Sometimes I do the, the vote off to the side and then I do the vote for the actual okay. so legislation there. So, how are you going to do it? So for the amendment portion, uh, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grove. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Chimney. Yes. Okay. Now I guess we need a motion for 20, that ordinance with the amendment. So 2024-54. Right. Which, which I already have, have a first a and a second. second. So yeah. Well, no. so okay. Just go ahead. On the amendment. We already voted on it. We have a motion and a second on the original motion. Oh, okay. Yeah. So for the original motion, uh, Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grow. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Chamey. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Accepted seven to zero. All right. Okay. Any other additional? Go ahead. We got one more. Oh, you got one yep. more? Um, ordinance 2024 55, introduced on 10 7 24, public and hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for insurance with USI Insurance Services LLC, representing the public entity's pool of Ohio for the administration of said policy. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Sorry, I guess I have a question, and since Colleen's here, maybe it should be directed towards her. Um, did we check other insurances, or is this just a we fall to the same insurance every time? I wasn't involved in this okay. group, I'm but sorry. they they have, in prior years, done some comparisons, and they're still um, with the lowest cost. We've been with them for a while, but okay. I wasn't in this year. I, I'm not sure if he also looked outside he probably her. did i just was curious he had that's all and it went up a little bit yeah time. it did that's why i was wondering mm -hmm. thank you well i think kathy you had a comment the other day in regards to the upgraded price since i've been on council we have greatly improved the condition and the later models of the fleet which would in turn probably cause the premium to go up mm -hmm. from what I have seen. Right. And I would be under the assumption that was the reason for the price increase, along with the normal increases. Market condition so, is what 5% for marketing condition is what APD stands for, which I'm not sure what that even means. I was going to ask, but... Anybody have anything else? Uh, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. 
Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chami? Yes. Accepted seven to zero. All right, now, we got any other additional city business somebody wants to bring up? I do. I would like to start an arts committee for the city to do things like art in the park. Um, I'd like to get the kids in the drama club at the high school involved because we have an amphitheater that's not being used. I think it would be great to get them involved in some theater, see if they're up for that um, over the summer. Something for families, battle the bands for you know, <laughs> our teenagers, that's always super fun. Uh, I personally was a punk rocker in my day. <laughs> um, so things like that, getting some some art into the community of all kinds, fine arts, performance, music, things of that nature. So I would like to counsel. I don't know how to word this. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Have you got another four or five people that's wanting to serve on this committee? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I thought I had to bring it to council. That's all right. That's all right. I didn't know where you were going with this. <laughs> Any comments? I think it's a wonderful idea. I like it. All right. Uh, do you want to make that in a formal motion? I assume you... You want a motion, Chris? Do you need a motion to form a committee? Um, go ahead. I really wasn't even listening to it. Sorry, I was trying to get all this work. Um, well, so a motion I, I think it would be committee. on the books and would probably be better if we did have a motion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So your motion is to form an arts in the park committee um, you want to call it something different yeah arts and beautification committee for the city of New Carlisle obviously it would not be that long <laughs> do we have a second okay it's this oh, I'm sorry <clears throat> yep okay councilwoman Wright yes councilman Lindsay yes Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. <clears throat> Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chair? Accepted six to one. All right, is there any other additional business? Move to adjourn. Uh, we're not there yet, I don't think. I just uh, want to verify for your guys' work sessions next week. But they're still happening. Monday, Tuesday, like and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. the, uh, <clears throat> earlier this evening, we broke rules of council and went into executive session at the city manager's request. So I'm not sure that we need the executive session that's on the agenda now. We probably will have to move that to a our next meeting uh, but at that meeting the city manager resigned and I moved to accept his resignation and the terms that was discussed in an executive session and the city lawyer will put together the draft and email it out to, to all of us Second. So primarily we're going to wait until we get that paperwork from the city manager before we vote. We're not getting it from the attorney. From the attorney. And it will state what was discussed in the, in the uh, executive session. And yes, we have to accept his resignation tonight. Because for obvious reasons in the executive meeting. So your motion is to accept the city manager's resignation in the terms that were discussed during executive session. Executive right. session. And to the, have the have the attorney forward the the uh, letter to us or the agreement to us. <clears throat> Can you second. 
Okay, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Sh Councilman yes. Shami? Yes. Accepted six to one. All right, is there anything else that anybody wants to bring up before we adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Mm -hmm. Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chairman? Yes.